Hi there, this is the Common Magician, and as always, I want to try something very interesting uh, with you. I've got a deck of cards here. I will just give it a quick uh, shuffle. And uh, what I want you to do is I just want you to make a selection. Uh, we'll make this as free as possible. Uh, I just want you to tell me when to stop as I riffle down through the cards. Just say stop and you're comfortable. Say right there. I'm going to give you a choice. You can either go with this card or you can go with one more or you can go with one less. This one, one more, one less. Which one do you want? One, one more. Okay, this is the next card right here. You can see what it is. This is the King of Hearts. Uh, that'll work for what we're doing. Um, it's not ideal, uh, but it will work. I want you to um, sign it or put a marking on this that's yours. There's a lot of graphics on this card. It's better if it's a mostly white face, but uh, I'll just have you put, uh, if you could just put a signature or uh, your initials or some kind of shape, anything that identifies this as yours, just kind of right there in that, that little spot. So let's say you put in, uh, I don't know, uh, we'll, we'll say you put in Peter Cottontail, PC, whatever, okay? So that's your initials. Um, what I want to do with this card, this card that you've selected freely, is I want, I want to keep it safe. Uh, we're going to put this in safekeeping inside the box, okay? And we'll set that aside. But actually, I want to do this in a very different, unusual way. Uh, rather, than, rather than putting it uh, in the box uh, like this, I want to try something else. We're going to take your card, uh, and we're going to set it uh, back into the deck here. We're just going to give it a shuffle, very fair shuffle, and I want to try something. I think you'll note this is very unusual. I find that when I do this, cards of interest have a tendency to completely disappear. You can see that your card is nowhere to be found in the deck. The King of Hearts is completely absent. But, if you look over here, Peter Cottontail. If you've seen the movie The Prestige, there's a great moment in there uh, where the uh, uh, Hugh Jackman character is complaining about uh, a trick that uh, a, his rival is doing uh, that is just wowing audiences all over the place and he can't figure it out. Uh, he's absolutely certain of the result, but he cannot figure out the method. Uh, and he's uh, complaining and griping and having an argument, uh, inventing to uh, the Michael Caine character in there, uh, in the movie, who is a trick designer. He's an engineer. He designs tricks. He's the He's the man behind the curtain that's uh, uh, putting things together for his clients. And, uh, and uh, the Hugh Jackman character says... Well, how does he do it? And the Michael Caine character says... He uses a double. No, 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 no. It's too simple. This is a complex illusion. You only say that because you don't know the method. It's a double that comes out at the end. It's the only way. Uh, and it goes on from there. And there's... It's funny because... Uh, there's a big spoiler alert if you've not seen it. Ultimately, in the end, uh, he's right. That's exactly what's going on. And it, it, the, the, the other ironic thing about that whole sequence in the movie is that it, that really is true. That is how that type of stage illusion would be done uh, in a classic or a contemporary setting. It's really an old trick that's got a number of different manifestations in uh, stage magic, but it also has a number of manifestations in close-up magic as well. And there is this sort of Hugh Jackman side to many magicians that they insist that the impossible location trick must be done such a way that the item of question, the item of interest at the beginning of the trick must be the exact same item at the revelation. Um, and I think that's a completely unnecessary uh, concern to have because it eliminates some of the very best methods to accomplish the feat. Um, if you dress up the concept of a double or a duplicate, uh, properly, it can be extremely effective and completely boggling. So um, I'm, I'm going to do a short series here, just a couple of videos as I have the time, uh, hopefully a little bit shorter in length, that evaluate and uh, investigate this concept 
of uh, the double in the impossible location plot. Uh, so we're going to look at a number of different impossible location type routines with cards, maybe with some other things, uh, but we're going to refine our methodology down to the concept and the, the implementation of a double or a duplicate in the presentation of that particular type of trick. Um, so let's take a look at the one that I've demonstrated here. So this trick, as is the case with all of these examples, uses a duplicate. And uh, I'm sure you sorted that out if you were paying attention. If not, you'll see how this works. You want to use a um, face card for this. We use the King of Hearts, uh, but really it could be any one of the suits, any, or rather any one of the uh, court cards in any suit. What you'll need, of course, is another deck of cards, and you'll need a duplicate. Uh, so. Here I have another King of Hearts from another deck. Really, to do this, you only need two decks. Now, I'll, I'll, first I'll say this isn't my style. I usually don't have signed cards. I don't use, do signed card tricks. I just don't do it. Some people who really work, though, will do this. And uh, you can have one deck of cards that you're using for signed card routines. Uh, and you can even find a way to make this work on non court cards as well if you narrow down the area for people to sign. One uh, thing that I've seen is that uh, you can have people sign in the margin uh, and then this will work uh, as well uh, doing that. In this case I've got uh, this card and I place parentheses in the place where I want them to sign and I've got this one it's just got a dollar sign at sign on it. Uh, this is the duplicate, and it's just mumbo-jumbo in there because whenever I present this uh, at, in place of the a real card, and, and the, the spectator's card, uh, later I'm going to just cover that up slightly with a finger as I present it, and it'll just be a subtlety in passing uh, as I place it back into the deck or lose it uh, at that point. So I just have some markings on here to stand in for the spectators markings uh, just for a quick glance and really anything here will work. Um, if you're doing the margin idea you can just sign kind of a dense sign signature or if you print you could ask them to print uh, and just put a little squiggle down there uh, such that it can stand in for their card at the moment. Now this takes us back to our prestige example in that case their spoiler alert uh, it's an identical twin uh, is the second man uh, coming out of the box at the end. In stage magic, uh, they don't have identical twins. They will use people that look very similar. And usually you will uh, pass off the duplicate or the, uh, the, the stand-in for the original person, and the stand-in will not be seen completely or clearly. Uh, it might even be someone who is costumed, right? If the original person puts on a mask or a costume or something like that, some way that they're covered up, the stand-in, of course, doesn't have to look anything like them. Um, so this is what we're doing. This is a this is a duplicate stand-in that looks a lot like the original, and it has a it seems to have the markings on it that a spectator placed, uh, and that make it that that make it seem authentic, but it is not. So the way this works is that your duplicate card is going to sit inside of the um, card box to start with. You will have a card selected, uh, and I'm not going to ruin another King of Hearts, but I've got my other one here. Uh, you will have a card selected, and it doesn't matter what force you use. What I did is I crimped the card, I placed it in the top quarter, uh, and then I also had as my setup um, a way to make the card vanish. And the way I did that was with a joker on top. And then this is going to be my force card here, and I'm going to lay a crimp into it real quick. Now, you don't have to do this. You can force it any way you want, but I tried to put a, an extra convincer in there for people that were paying attention. I have this in the top uh, quarter of the deck, so sitting up close to the top. On top, I've got a joker, and then on the back of the joker, I've placed a piece of double stick tape. Uh, so we're going to use the double stick tape as a means of uh, removing our duplicate card when the time comes. So we'll place that on the top. So this is my setup. My uh, force card is down here with a crimp. 
my uh, jokers up here that we're going to use to make the duplicate disappear. I have my duplicate set up in the box and uh, what I'm going to do is in my presentation I did a shuffle and if I shuffle down halfway and then I shuffle that crimped card which is in the top quarter into the other half it will actually place it more central. Now I want to make sure that my double stick tape card ends up on top in the shuffle. This does not ruin the crimp. I still have my crimp uh, there to use and it places it more central into the deck. So what I'm going to do now after that a little subtlety that first um, uh, shuffle is I'm going to grab my break and then I'm going to do a riffle force and I say you know I have them say stop and then what I do is I pick up at the break and then I do a little piece of equivocate this is a nice idea when you're doing a riffle force um, you can say you have your choice it can be this card and make sure you gesture with both hands it can be this card at this point or it could be one more or one less if they say this card you say great here's the card that you stopped at if they say one more say great the next card would be this one. If they say one less, you say, good, one less from the place where we stopped is this one. You see that you can pass off this card at this point for any one of those. It is a, really a perfect equivocate. Uh, it's this card, it's one more, this would be the next card, or one less, this is the card before the card that you selected. Uh, you then take out this card, you have them sign it or initial it in a little section that you're going to uh, use on the duplicate. doesn't matter what's at. Or again, you could have them sign on the bottom and you have a squiggle on the bottom. What you want to do now, though, is you're going to take, you're going to take the card and you want to place it into the box. And I just said, uh, I'm going to place it in here for safekeeping. But what I'm doing is I'm actually placing it underneath my duplicate. I say, I'll place it in here for safekeeping. Uh, you want to have this angled away so they can't see the duplicate inside. And you say, but, but not right away. So now when I take it out, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the duplicate, which is on top, and I'm going to naturally reach in and cover it up with my finger, uh, that little marking. Now, if you have them sign on the bottom and your duplicate is a squiggle, what you would want to do is you'd want to reach in and you'd want to grab it over that section and just very briefly show it as you turn it over, okay? It's, it's just a subtlety demonstration. I'm reaching in, I take out my duplicate, uh, and then what I do is I turn it over immediately and I set it uh, on top of my um, card that has the double stick tape, which in this case is the Joker. So I set it on top, they've briefly seen that. I just move the box out of the way as if it doesn't matter, and my original card is now in there. I've made a switch. Okay, so this is the person in the stage illusion that's masked now that does a quick uh, pass behind a curtain or behind an object and they switch off with the duplicate of the stand-in as the person then goes to another location, right? It's, a, it's just the way this kind of trick is done. It doesn't matter if it's a big trick or a little trick. Um, now I've placed my duplicate on top of my double stick tape. I can give it a, a little squeeze and then I can do an overhand shuffle and I can shuffle it into the pack. Now I'm set up perfectly to do a spread on the table and it is gone. It's not in there. Now here's my original. Uh, but otherwise my, my real card is missing. It's stuck now to the back of this uh, joker and it's pretty freely. You can very freely uh, show the deck at this point. And then you're just left with the reveal uh, where the original card comes out the end. So, you know, as the Michael Caine character says, you know, he uses a double. It's the only way to make it work. So uh, that's what we're doing here. And we'll examine other examples where we're using duplicates or doubles uh, in other presentations to do this impossible location feat. Uh, again, you don't have to be limited in uh, just using uh, a duplicate without getting it signed. There are ways to uh, disguise a signature uh, by giving some limitation uh, and you really you could even have them sign on it and put a squiggle on there and if you if you're holding it in the right way with just the right subtlety glance 
you can really get away, and certainly at a distance, certainly if you're doing this on a stage set apart from people, there's quite a bit you can get away with in this duplicate sort of scenario. But that's an idea for you uh, to have a signed or a marked card uh, that uh, is put into an impossible location, but you're using a duplicate to achieve it. So we'll look at other subtle variations on this, uh, not just for cards, but maybe for some other things as well, uh, in this concept of impossible locations using duplicates to achieve the method. So with that, good luck with this and happy magicking.